Now, we're going to move on to a big talking point this week, and uh, our own Kevin Blake uh, wrote a piece for the At The Races website. Do check it out. If you haven't read it, you won't know what everyone's talking about. Uh, but check out uh, uh, Kevin's piece. But uh, we'll throw up graphics as you come to them, uh, Kevin. But just lay out for us your thesis, why you were revisiting this, and, and, and what, the, what the sort of data, what the evidence is for your argument. But I suppose just to bring it back to the start, as long as female jockeys have ridden against men, it's been on equal terms. And for, in all that time, we have decades and decades of evidence. And in more recent decades, the levels of female participation in racing have been very comparable to male participation. You know, right now, I think 31% of currently licensed apprentice jockeys in the UK are female. But the, the issue is, when you then look at the results a little bit further down the line, that ends up being chopped right down to a very small number of female jockeys. Pause there for one second. 30% apprentices. How many are coming into the sport? 70% of mm. uh, the uh, people coming through the racing school, so this is, as they leave school and come in and do their six week, is 70% are female. Not all of those will expect to be race riders. Some might train and hope to be... Absolutely. I mean, well, well, when the racing school is brilliant, but there is obviously a churn yep. that it then flips down to one or two percent that end up being professional okay. ladies. So seventy percent coming in to train, thirty percent making it to be apprentices, and then what? Well, if you look at the current top fifty riders in the UK, there's two female names there: Holly Doyle and Nicola Curry. So, the assumption that under which we race is that male jockeys and female jockeys are equal, but the results over a long, long period of time suggest that something goes wrong along the way, and my feeling, having examined the evidence for many, many years now and thought about it an awful lot, is that the issue is not with individual riders. The issue is with the playing field. There is a slight disadvantage there for female jockeys compared to males as groups. And when you look at the wider evidence of the sporting world, you know, it's not that difficult to see why that might be the case. If you go into any other sport, you know, track and field events, the, the measurable difference between males and females at the top level is 10%. You go into sports that are more strength-based, it is significantly higher than that. The beauty about horse racing and other, other equestrian sports and motor racing, you know, they're some of the few examples, is that we have an outside influence that, that, le that um, narrows the gap. The, yeah, horse. The, the horse in horse racing Let's put a number on it. Is 99 percent of the equation? I'd say 90. I think that's what we sort of we always used to, uh, jump jump wise and flat wise. Like people, the 90 was the sort of figure that mm. jockey can make. That's because you're, you're a former rider, Josh. You think <laughs> I you, you can make 10 percent? No, no, no. My, my, my was 10, 10 pound overweight, more than 10 percent different. We, we can argue the task, but it's the vast majority of the equation. Sure. So let's continue our the, the the thought from other sports that there might be a 10 percent difference. So now we're into 10 percent of 10 percent, which brings us down to perhaps a 1 percent gap. And if that gap is there, you know, I feel... Over big numbers. Yes, over, over big numbers. And if you look at the data here and the evidence, like I say, we have decades upon decades of data to sift through to back this up. This is, this is, this is not a recent thing. The fact that female jockeys have struggled to break into the top 50 has been ongoing forever. And the fact that we do have individual riders who are very successful doesn't negate that you're talking about the mass of riders yes the, the group. average is what we're how why we have we have a situation where you know currently 30 percent of apprentice jockeys is being chopped down to such a tiny number that have you know i'm, I'm not like the likes of Haley turner for example we're discussing whether she's the best female jockey that britain has ever produced in my opinion she is should we not be concerned that a rider that is clearly an, a complete outlier within her own population of her gender has never broken into the top 10 riders in this country ever throughout her career. She came very close at one stage, but she never rose higher. If we're operating on the assumption that the terms in which we race are correct and males and females are equal, should a massive outlier like Hayley Turner not have risen higher? You know, and that's just the evidence of the very top. My, and, and it, it's, it's a common thing that when this discussion comes up, people will inevitably focus on the outliers. They'll say, yep. oh, what about Hayley Turner? What about Rachel Blackmore? You know, you have to look at the bigger sample. Don't think about them. Think about the younger girls that are coming up through that are struggling for the opportunities. And think about the playing field. Okay. Don't so think about individuals. There's, there's two, think two, about the playing field. There's two field. things here, Kevin, no, just to, to, to clarify. Are you saying, just so that we get this clear, are you saying that they're not as good 
as the guys, or are you saying there is there's the playing field, such as trainers and owners, don't put the, don't, don't, doesn't come into the consideration for them to put them up? Well, the evidence that we have from France, so my, my issue is playing field. It's all about the playing field. I, I think it's been rigged essentially from the outset. I think it, there's very few other sports in the world that would... Just would clarify what you mean by not as good, because this is... This That's is what you're saying. We're, saying. we're talking about these margins that were going yeah. down, mm. and you were saying about um, that there's 10% difference mm. in other sports between males and females and strength. Mm. And then we started talking about the horse, but are you actually saying that females aren't as good uh, as, uh, and strong enough, uh, or as strong as their male um, counterparts? I wouldn't jockey. necessarily distill it down to just strength. There's clearly much more at play. But I think if you got, uh, we know the problem with jockeys and a big problem with this whole debate is it's very difficult to quantify what is good in a rider. How do we measure ability? But I think if you, if you were able to do that and we got the average ability of all professional female riders, it would be here and the average ability of all male riders would be here. It's slightly, it's very difficult to perceive it on a day to day basis. Which is why, you know, examples of yesterday, you know, Haley having great success, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that shouldn't surprise anyone it, because the difference is very small. This, you, ha you have to take a step back okay. and We're look at the wider to, data. Yeah. And, and you, you mentioned the, the F word, France, and we will come to that in just a moment because we now do have data from France mm. because they've, they, they've made a change to their rules, which is what prompted this whole discussion. But just, Jamie, on, the, on this point of how do we measure jockeys, it's a big issue for our sport because mm. in, others, in other sports you can count how many runs a, a batsman gets, you can see how fast an athlete runs, but measuring the effectiveness of a jockey. I know that Timeform, when you, when you were there a few years yeah. ago, did look at this. It's very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. And again, it's not quantifiable precisely, but there are more sophisticated ways of looking at it. All the rider can comfortably do is get the maximum out of the horse. And that's why a simple binary win, loss, or number of rides just quite won't do. And I was just looking at the Timeform data. I did seek this out yesterday. And eight of the top 100 British riders right now are female. But on the Timeform measurement, 12 are actually female so just quite interesting in itself that there are a few more high performing females at least with a time form measurement than in the win ratio measurement and that's factory in what expected wins against the odds uh, yeah, of horses lots of, sort of stuff. yeah lots of things run to form ratio expectancy yeah. okay. efficiency things like that okay interesting so they might be outperforming the bare win well, statistics compared to yeah the bare statistics yeah, yeah. But, but still underrepresented mm numerically potentially let's go to France Kevin because that's what prompted your your whole uh, blog piece because mm. you, you've looked at what they've done in France and we should remind people what they did in France very quickly they, they introduced a weight allowance in 2017 2017 20 yes March yeah. 2017 yeah. Uh, for women riders initially two kilos then dropped down to one and a half kilos on the flat which is about 3.3 pounds in old money and, and what are we seeing here Kevin well you can see a, a massive uplift straight away in terms of number of rides number of wins, strike rate, and something that isn't on that graph is that it's important to note that the strike rate across all jockeys in France is about 9.5, 9.6%. Yep. So you see the effect the allowance has had. It has lifted the strike rate of female jockeys very close to the average. That's very important context. It is very important context yeah. because when before this allowance was introduced and we were discussing purely based on theory, one of the most common uh, problems people would have with the thought is that giving female jockeys two kilos in this case or one and a half would give them too much of an advantage the likes of the very it would give the very best ones certainly too much of an advantage but we haven't seen that in France across the population of female jockeys it has served to raise their strike rate up to close to the average of all jockeys you know they've done a great job in estimating what that allowance should be and interestingly you know the great thing about talking about these you know quite difficult issue so openly is that we all tend to learn something and I learned something this week um, that Laurent highlighted in here that I, I, well, I didn't know where the French pulled two kilos from was it a guesstimate or what but it was actually based uh, on science as you were telling me Boise yeah uh, the theory was as Laurent explained to me um, that, that they looked at the, the differences in lean muscle mass in body weight you know uh, as a, a physiological difference between the two sexes and they tried to uh, they looked at the average riding weight of riders and and they use that as their kind of benchmark that's how they came up with that figure so it was it was a conscious effort to try it goes back to your point to level the playing field and it touches on your point Joshua it's not about necessarily about being better in terms of technique we see in the fields of other equestrian sports dressage I think must be one of the most exacting equestrian disciplines there is and women probably outperform men. They dominate interestingly yeah. mm. uh, but we're talking about 
th that physiological difference, which is to do with strength, stamina, um, spatial cognition, various other things which are associated with testosterone, for example. So, and, and it might be a small difference in the world of racing, but maybe, maybe, maybe the French have, by experimenting, stumbled on the right equation. Yeah, and I, I think it, w it would just be very difficult to make a, a cogent case for, ev for things being exactly even across the average. And what we've seen in France is that two kilos or one and a half kilos has gone an awful long way to closing that gap that I, that I feel must be there. And, at, you know, one and a half kilos is a very, very small amount. And it backs up the thought that the difference, it, it's, it's tiny relatively, but it's there. And in a, ra in a sport like racing, where, mar where you know, you're a winner or a loser based on that much, yep. you know, that makes a difference. And it's going to be a fairly crude measure because there are going to be, as, as you've touched on, some women who, who, who clearly don't need it, some mm. women for who it won't, it won't be sufficient, some men who will be disadvantaged by it because they're mm. not as good as the best men riding and they're going to be further yeah. disadvantaged by it. But it, it's, a, it's, it's a way of addressing the, the cohort issue. Exactly. Look, and I, you won't get a bigger believer in every walk of life in meritocracy than me. You know, I'm all for the best rising to the top by, on merit alone. But my, and my problem with this whole situation and why I'm coming out as I am, I don't think the, the playing field is level. If we can level the playing field, which I feel an allowance would, then let meritocracy sort out who is best and they'll rise and they'll fall. You know, giving female jockeys a weight allowance will, will not automatically mean that every girl succeeds because plenty will not be good enough. But it's when you balance the playing field that's when you get a true reflection of who's good enough and who's not. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds to me like you're saying that in the interests of equality and fairness, we are discriminating against women. We're being unfair to them, potentially. My belief is that the, the playing field has been rigged against female jockeys from day one. And think back to the historical origins of females riding against males on level terms. For decades upon decades, females fought for the right to ride against men. They weren't allowed so, and that was driven by blatant sexism by the establishment at the time. That is undeniable. And then when eventually they, were pres they, they collapsed under pressure and decided to lead, uh, allow females to ride against males, what do you think their thought was in making them ride on level terms? Do you think they genuinely believed it was equal? Of course they didn't. They were doing it begrudgingly. They were saying, OK, ladies, you want to ride against the men. You'll do on level terms. Let's see how they get on. They assumed they would fail. They assumed that they would be discouraged by, by the lack of success they enjoyed. And, you know, it's to the great credit of so many female jockeys, pioneers going back 40 years, that they have succeeded so much. But that is in spite of a rigged playing field. And the evidence that we have over decades and decades is that the difference is very small okay. in a racing context. And all I'm seeking to do is address that. And it, it really frustrates me, Boise, in that it is assumed that my case is anti-female riders and I'm trying to bring down female riders, but this is a pro-female jockey case. If I had a problem with female jockeys and I didn't want female jockeys to succeed, there's no question which side of this debate I'd be on. I'd be on for maintaining the status quo yeah. because the current system has done a wonderful job of keeping female jockeys away from the top of this sport know. for decades. It's a passionate, passionate defence. Uh, what would you do? Adopt the French system uh, because, in your view, it seems to be working? I think so. You know, I think so. Three pounds, four pounds, I don't know. I leave it to cleverer people than me to, to decide where it should be. And the thing is, Boise, a lot, of, and we'll hear from some of the female jockeys later on and the opinions they have on this, and I hear a lot of them saying, we have a wonderful batch of female jockeys right now. Give it five years, and I'm sure some of them will break through to the top level. I remember 15 years ago, Cathy Gannon, first female champion apprentice in Ireland. Hayley Turner, first champ joint champion apprentice in the UK. Um, Katie Walsh, Nina Carberry, Kirsty Milzerek, Lisa Jones. Wonderful batch of female riders. And I remember hearing the exact same things being said at the time. Here we are. This is the turning point. This is where female jockeys are going to break through the glass ceiling, and away we go. 15 years later, we still have two females in the top 50. You and I, I suspect if we wait, we continue to wait, we're, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. 